Hi guys, Squall here and welcome to episode 2 in my tutorial series of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this episode, we're going to look at peripheral setup. That is how to map buttons, switches, HOTAS, rudder pedals, sticks, anything and everything that you might have in your PC. How we're going to map it so that you can control things in the aircraft in Microsoft Flight Sim. Now this being episode 2, I strongly urge you to watch episode 1 before you start watching episode 2. The knowledge that is running through these tutorial series is designed to be layered so that it builds on top of previous episodes. That being said, I strongly urge you to subscribe for more episodes and in the video description you'll find a playlist to the whole tutorial set. So let's get started. Now when setting up controllers it's actually a lot easier to do it if we're inside of the aircraft. So what I want you to do is click on the world map, top left click on the aircraft selection screen, click on propellers, scroll along and find the Cessna 152. This is a basic aircraft which we'll do for our button mapping purposes. And then I want you to select departure airport, type in L-O-W-I, which is Innsbruck, and then click on runway 26 as the departure point. Flight conditions on the top right, uh, click off for multiplayer, off for air traffic control, click on preset, choose clear skies, and then slide the time of day till about midday. Then click on fly and I'll see you in the plane. So if you've done things correctly, you should now be at runway 26 and uh, we're in the Cessna 152. First things first, if you right click and hold right click with your mouse button, you'll be able to look around the cockpit, which is incredibly useful. Also, if you spin the mouse wheel, you'll be able to zoom in and out. So this allows you to just look around and uh, decide what it is that you want to map. Also, if you click on the base of the yoke, it will disappear, which can make it really a lot easier to see buttons and things behind. So there are many, many controllers and peripherals that you could plug in. Not all of them will be supported by Microsoft Flight Sim. Some of them are supported out of the box. For example, the Thrustmaster Warthog controller, it will recognize that and it will set up some defaults. But then something like, say, my MFG crosswind rudder pedals, it won't recognize them out of the box and I'll have to configure everything. So let's go through them step by step. First of all, let's just look at how we can map any button on our controller to something in the plane. So we'll start with the flaps. Normally, if you want to operate flaps with just the mouse, you can drag them up and down like that. But when you're flying, it's really handy to have a button that you can press to just retract the flaps or extend them. Press the escape key and go to controls. If we go over to one of your devices, so let's say on my on my system, I have a throttle, a Thrustmaster Warthog, which is the throttle quadrants. Pick one of the devices that you want to put um, flaps on. Now, because this is a supported controller, it shows me a picture of it. If I was to choose the crosswind rudder pedals, you can see it doesn't recognize this and there aren't any mappings available. So because this is something it recognizes, it will pre-populate some control mappings for me. However, I may not agree with them and I want to change them or just add some new ones. So how do we do that? Well, for example, over here on the left is the search box and we can click in here and type the word F-L-A-P and it will show us some flat mappings that it already has. So button 23 is this switch here. Button 22 is the opposite. This thing goes backwards and forwards. And if you look, it says extend flaps to the last level and retract flaps completely. So what it's done is it's given me a button mapping to fully extend the flaps and fully retract the flaps. This is not very useful. It's much better if we extend the flaps in stages. So we need to find the mapping for that. Why is it not showing it? Well, the reason is because the filter over here is on assigned. So all it's showing me at the moment is mappings that match my search criteria where it has something mapped on the controller. If I change this to all, it will show me all the possible mappings that match the criteria flap. So cow flaps, uh, flaps one, two, three, four, increase flaps, all of this stuff. If you click it again, it goes to essentials and essentials will show you things that the sim believes to be essential items. If I clear the flap down a second, You'll see what I mean. So these are controls that it kind of suggests that you will need to map at some point. Whereas all 
will show every single possible thing that you can map. So for now, just put it back onto Essentials, type in the word flap into here. And this is what we want. Decrease flaps by one level and increase flaps by one level. Now, what I want to do is I want to map it to this red button here. So it's quite simple to do. You just click on the, and then it will say, what is it you want to map? And you just press the button. So this is the decrease flap. So I will press it back, click on that, and then press back, and it will map it to number 12, click validate. And it now says you need to enter a name for this new profile because we're about to change the default profile. If you look top right here, it's got default. We can't change the default profile. So what we have to do is give it a different name. So let's call it episode two for episode two of the tutorial. Click OK. And it's now got that mapped. Click on this one. Click again. Press the button the other way. Click validate. And we're done. So 11 and 12 is now mapped to flaps increase and decrease. If we now change this to assigned, now we have all four assigned. So we have a flaps increment and decrement here and a full extend and retract over here. But I might want to use this for something else. So maybe I'll just get rid of that. How do we get rid of it? Well, we've got, if you click on the mapping as it stands and you can just say clear input, validate, done. And it's disappeared because it's only shown as assigned stuff. Click that again, clear input, validate, done. So I've now got that button available to do something else with, and this one now controls my flaps. So we'll click apply and save at the bottom, press the escape key, and we'll go and test it. So if I hit my button forward, you can see it goes up and down in stages, and I can confirm that by looking out. I can see my flaps coming down there. And if I press the button, the fully extended or retracted flaps, nothing's happening. Cool. So that's how you map basic buttons. Oh, and before we continue, you know, I said right mouse button drags around the camera. If you want to get the camera back to the basic, control space will take you straight back to the default view. That's how you just reset the cockpit camera. Control space, very handy. So how do we map, for example, an axis? Well, the throttle axis down here on my Warthog is already mapped because it recognized my throttle and it said hey I'm gonna map that to throttle for you so mixture this one here is not mapped at all how do we map that as an axis press the escape key go into controls and first thing you need to do is pick the peripheral that you want along the top which is this one here and you notice now it's on throttle hotas warthog episode 2 which is the one that we just created so what we want to do is find the axis. The easiest thing to do is to type in here and put axis like that. And you can see that it has already mapped two things by default. It's mapped this portion here, which I can move. And it's also mapped this portion here, which I can move for mixture. However, I don't want to use this for the mixture. I would rather use this for the mixture. So how do I change it? Well, if I click on it and then I say clear input and then click search input and move that axis. There you go. This one, it's called axis seven. Click validate, apply and save. Go back in. When I move it, it does this. Be careful with that one, because if you pull it out, it will actually stop the engine, <laughs> which is what the mixture is supposed to do. So that's how you map uh, an axis, but some axes are need some tuning. For example, the rudder pedals down here and the ailerons and the elevators, all this stuff here will need tuning. See, when we move this around, it has a tendency to sort of snap too much. How do we actually tune an axis so that it's not so hypersensitive? So back in the control setup, Find the device that you want to use for rudder. Now, it could be that you've got one of those twist grip type sticks, in which case you'll want to use that. I happen to have rudder pedals. So I'll click on this. Notice there's nothing mapped by default. Now, the first thing you want to do is on the left here, anything that has an axis on it will have a sensitivity that you can tune. So for example, if we go back to the throttle, 
and I click on sensitivity, you can see my throttle axis has a sensitivity that I can tune. If I go back to my crosswind and click on sensitivity, it shows me three axes. I've got my rudder left and right. I've got my left toe brake and I've got my right toe brake. So the first thing I want to do is set up these axes and then map them to something. There are a couple of options that you have on, a, on an axis. One of them is the sensitivity. The other one is the dead zone. If I just give it a really big dead zone and then it says to me, this is not a default profile. Let's call it episode two. Click OK. There you go. So that's what my axis now looks like. If I, if I start pushing my rudder pedal to the right, it will send the game a zero value. This is zero. This is maximum. It'll send the game a zero value and then suddenly boom, it'll, up, it'll go up. Now you want to have some dead zone uh, in a rudder pedal, probably about two, three, four percent, something like just a small amount. So you can make very, very, you know, just resting your feet on the rudder pedals You make very slight adjustments and it doesn't actually adjust the rudder pedal in the sim. How much you want is entirely up to your personal preference, but there's a little bit of wiggle there where I'm not going to get any rudder movement. The other one is the sensitivity. At the moment, this is what they call a linear translation. So as I push to the right, I get a right mapping in a linear fashion from naught to 100%. This makes it slightly difficult to do very small adjustments in the rudder, which can be very useful when you're on final to land. So what you might want to do is adjust the sensitivity and bring it down to something like minus, say, 40%, which will give you a curve. That means that at low rudder pitches, low rudder movements with my feet, I get a small amount of movement and I can smoothly translate into full rudder deflection. So maybe start at like minus 40 or minus 50% and then adjust it as you see fit. Over here, we have the left and right brake. So all I want to do with these is give it some dead zone, say 5%. With brakes, you probably want to keep it linear. With rudder pedals and um, pitch and roll, you want to have some kind of curve. Brakes and throttle and mixture, you always want to be linear. So click on done. And then the next thing you need to do is map it. So if we go to essentials, we should be able to find uh, those brakes there. We want rudder, so we'll put rudder like that. There's rudder axis. We click on this, click on the input, press the rudder pedal, click validate. Now when I move the rudder pedal left and right, there it is. Now when you get back in the game, if it happens to be that you're pressing right and it's going left, just click on the reverse axis. So the other thing I want to map is the toe brake. So I'll click on search and put in brake. And we've got, notice you've got left and right brake where you can map buttons. And you've got left and right brake axis where you can map, map axes. This is an axis that we're mapping. So we'll click on that. Click on that. Press the left toe brake. Validate. Click again. Right toe brake. Validate. And now we have a left and right toe brake. And since we already set the sensitivities up, it should work exactly as we want. So we'll click on apply and save. Press escape. Now, if you press the end key on your keyboard, that will go to the external camera and you can mouse wheel in and out like that. So if I now move my rudder pedal, there you go. I've got full right, full left deflection, and you can see I've got a nice amount of sensitivity. As for the actual tow brakes, testing them involves releasing the parking brake, which is done, moving the throttle forward, And then if I use my rudder pedal, I can steer. If I press the right toe brake, and then the left toe brake, I can see that they're all working nicely. I can also double check more simplistically by looking down here and seeing if I do deflection or press the toe brake in and out, you can see that I'm getting movements. And that is how you map axes. The ones that you'll need to map will be the roll on whatever stick you're using, the pitch, this is how you control the aircraft, rudder if you have it available, brakes I strongly suggest, definitely you want to have a throttle, 
make sure you can just do it with the mouse for now. But they're the main things that you want to map uh, in terms of axes. They are the minimum. After that, you probably want to map a button for parking brake. That can be really handy. Uh, a button for flaps would be really good. Car heat I wouldn't worry too much about. And then other things are things like your lights, which instead of having to turn lights on and off, you might want to map some buttons to lights. That is basically it for a small aircraft. Um, those will allow you to basically fly. You can always test it quickly by throttling forward. And seeing if you can actually take off. So let the airspeed build. Get it to about 40, 50 knots, pull back and hopefully she'll fly. Now you may notice something. You have to keep pulling back on the stick. When you actually let the stick go to a level position, you'll often find that it does this. Why does it do that? Well, that's what they call pitch trim. There's a button on your keyboard called pause brake. It's right next to the scroll lock key. If you press pause brake key, it will freeze the sim. So now we're able to look around even go to external camera and do things and the plane stays where it is. That also means we can fix things. I'm just going to get rid of the yoke a second. This is what they call the elevator trim. And the reason that we have to keep holding the stick back is because we're not what they call trimmed out. We need to be trimmed. So what we need is something that maps the pitch trim. So press escape, go to controls, pick a device that you want to use. For example, I'm going to use the wart, uh, the Warthog here. I'm going to search by name. I'm going to search by name. I'm going to search for trim by name. Put in the word trim and you'll see that it already has a key mapped. POV up and POV down. I know that this happens to be the POV button here, the grey one. If you don't have anything mapped for pitch trim up and down, map something. Anything you like, any button that you want on any controller that you want, but make sure you've got some kind of pitch control because you will need it, particularly in GA aircraft. Let's quickly jump back and try that out. So if I pull the switch down, you notice my pitch is actually moving up and down. And this is what we need. Once you've got that mapped and you're able to control it, simply unpause. And then try just putting the pitch down until you're able to do this, which is basically let go of the stick and the plane will just fly itself. If you pull back on the trim a little bit, you'll find that the aircraft just holds a position. I'm not holding the stick right now, but it will pitch up and pitch down. That is a key thing that people miss when they first learn to fly a GA plane. They can't work out why is it I have to pull the stick all the time or push the stick all the time. It's simply a matter of trim. So there's just two more things I wanted to show you before we finish this episode. The first one is, how do you find what a button is mapped to? Let's have a look. Go to your controls. Click on one of the peripherals that you have. Let's say this one here. And let's say I want to know what button 21 is mapped to without trying to scroll through this list and find it. And by the way, in all of these things here, you can use expand all or collapse all, uh, which might make it easy for you to look through the list. But let's say I don't know what button 21 does. Two ways I can find it. I can either select an input here and choose button 21. And it says button 21 toggle landing gear. So we'll clear that. The other way of doing it is to click on the input and then press the button. And it'll say button 21. Now this won't work, for example, if you press a button on another controller, it won't work in here because you have to first select the device that you want. So for example, if I want to look at the stick over here and find out what button seven does, I have to physically select this controller. I can't go pressing the landing gear button. It was not going to find it in here. If I press it now, it doesn't take the input. But for example, if I want button uh, seven, I click in here, press the up, and it says, oh, that's button seven, and that's mapped to decrease flaps. And that's how you can basically find things. The other thing I want to talk about briefly is the idea of profiles. 
you could have multiple profiles. You can see them and choose them in here. You can switch to default or some other profile you happen to have, for example, test profile I happen to have lying around or my squirrel profile that I use. And this means I can have multiple sets of button mappings for different situations. It might well be that I have this set up for GA planes in one way, but then when I fly in an airline, I have it set up in a different way. How do we manage this? Bottom left is the preset manager. So having selected episode two, I click on preset manager and there's a few things I can do. I can create a brand new profile, which will be completely empty. I can duplicate this profile. I can rename this one. If I click rename, I can just change the name. I can completely clear all the mappings in this profile. I can reset this to the default. So it just looks like the default profile or I can completely delete it. Having that ability will allow you to have different profile mappings for different aircraft that you might fly. It can be handy, but it can also be quite confusing. But you can also have it, for example, so that you have different sensitivities. And that's it for this episode in the tutorial series. I hope you found that very useful. Please subscribe for more content. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it. In the next one, we'll look at setting up cameras. But for today, take it easy, guys, and happy flying.